There we go. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Hi everybody, welcome, welcome. We'll just get a few more people into the room. It's just gone six. How is everybody? Hope everybody's having a nice day so far. I'll just wait a few minutes to start. Hi, Mariam. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Okay, so a few more people joining now. So what I'll do is I'll I'll make a start now because there's a few more people joining. If I just sit and wait for all the hundred people to <laughs> come in, we could be here all night. Um, hi everybody, I'm Lauren. If you don't know already, I'm sure a few of you follow my More on Law Instagram page, which is why you're here today. Thank you for joining me this evening. So let me get my PowerPoint slides up. Share my screen. Perfect. So this is session one of From Student to Future Trainee. It's going to be a three part series, basically, um, over the next couple of weeks in August about how to basically become a future trainee solicitor. And I wanted to make a series that was just really just packed full of actionable points. I feel like when I've gone to webinars before, they've been kind of wishy washy, like, they don't really give you the information that you want to know and like if you're you know spending an hour like this evening like to come to listen to me speak I want to try give you as much value as I possibly can from what I've learned so if we go on to the next slide on the agenda this evening we're going to be looking at how to apply to firms and choosing the right firm for you now this was something that I not I struggled with but I as, as you'll find out in a minute I did a chemistry degree and obviously coming from a non-law background that's so non-law <laughs> there was no kind of guidance at university on what law firms were you know I, I had no idea what any of the names were I didn't know what magic circle was like I just was totally clueless so hopefully I can shed some light on that for you guys how to build a good LinkedIn profile this is what I think got me the training contracts um through my LinkedIn um because I did a lot of interviews on there I built a good personal brand on there um so I'm going to be showing you 
well I'm going to guide you through what my LinkedIn looks like and how to build your own just like that how to network and make the most of your network now I've got a lot of experiences from my network and building that from scratch you know I had zero connections when I first started LinkedIn um and now I've got nearly four and a half thousand so you know it's all about how you can not just add value but how you can maintain those um connections on LinkedIn then we're going to talk about how to write legal CV this was something again I had no clue about but through my mentors over the years I've managed to pick up some really good tips on that. So I've created a template for you guys, which will be available on our gen afterwards. And it's also in my bio on my more and more if you haven't seen it already. And then we're going to have just a quick look at how to answer generic law firm questions because next week is the big application webinar. So I'm going to go through my like good versus bad um, questions, go through some other ones that I haven't released yet for you guys. So hopefully that'll be useful. And yeah, please feel free to put your hands up at any point, but we'll have a proper Q&A at the end where you can ask anything you want. So a little intro about me. I've kind of already touched on this, but I did a chemistry degree, so a bit of an unconventional route into law. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, you know, what on earth, like, what? why did you go into law? Um, funnily enough, it was actually intentional. I just had a real interest in chemistry and I knew that I could convert to law afterwards. Um, so that that's the honest reason. <laughs> um, I then did my graduate diploma in law, which if you don't know, is like the conversion um, degree that you have to do, which allows you to be at the kind of same level as someone who'd done a normal law undergrad degree. So I did that at the University of Law. My most recent role was a legal assistant at Freeth's. I actually finished yesterday, so it's very emotional time. Um, but yeah, really, really happy at my time there. I did a vacation scheme at Vince Mason's two years ago. I did work experience at CMS in London. I've amassed 1.5K followers on More and Law, which is amazing. And thank you guys for following me. I really appreciate it. Um, and 4.4K on LinkedIn. I'm a future trainee solicitor at multinational law firm Pinsett Mason's, and I start my LPC in September 2022. Um, which is next month, which is crazy, because when I wrote these slides, it sounded like it was a long time away, but now I'm like, oh, next month. Um, so we're going to jump right into it. How do you choose the right law firm for you? Now, as I say, when I first started this, I was completely baffled, didn't really know what to look for. I think your instinct is when when you see like a firm is going to pay an NQ salary of like 160k, you're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like, I want to go there. Um, but when you actually look at it, you know, that's completely irrelevant, to be honest, because all law firms pay well. Like to me, it just became something that was just not even a factor. So these are the factors that I would definitely consider. So what location? Now, when you're at uni, a lot of people kind of force you to think London, like that's the only way to go. Like, but that just is not the case. My training contract in the north, London was never really and anything that I, I considered um just because I I like where I live at the moment and I wanted a training contract there so you've got to just think about your long-term goals if you want to go to London that's great but if you also want to stay at home that's totally fine also or somewhere that you know so what areas of law am I interested in every law firm specializes in different areas so you know if you want to go into human rights law for example a commercially focused firm is probably not going to be for you. So just having a think about what really interests you, you know, what's motivating you to go into law? Are you interested in the transactional type stuff, corporate work, or are you more interested in, like I say, like human rights or advocacy and things like that? Um, Work-life balance. This is something that you can't really gauge from just researching online. You'll have to go to events and speak to people. Another useful tip to, to work out what the real work-life balance is of a place is to speak to people who used to work at a certain firm that you're interested in. Because a lot of the time, trainees that will be at the firm, obviously they'll want to like promote it and say how great it all is. But to find out really what the work-life balance is like, I would definitely speak to people who previously worked at a firm. Like I just touched on then, you want to be looking at future prospects, moving firms later. So if you train at a magic circle firm for example you've basically you know take your pick like you can go anywhere you want after doing a training contract somewhere like that whereas if you trained at a much smaller firm 
while it is still possible, very possible to get to a magic circle firm or US firm or wherever you, wherever you want to go, it might be a bit harder. So if you want to, your end goal is to end up at a firm like that, maybe pick somewhere that's more of a national law firm or a multinational law firm, for example. Firm culture, this is really important. For me, I really wanted somewhere that was, you know, everybody was kind, supportive. Um, and, and for some people that just isn't for them and that that's fine. Um, but that was something that was important to me. So I think it's it's really good to think about what are your core values and, and what do you really want out of the place that you work? You know, I think while it two years doesn't sound like that long, <laughs> it is a long time like every day if you really hate your job um so I think it's important to think where would you feel the most comfortable and go with that and then also how do you want to be trained this is something that I started to realize a couple of years into researching law firms is how would I actually want to be trained um because it's something that you don't really consider you just kind of look at like the, the above factors like where, what, what am I interested in what location for example um but thinking about how you want to be trained is important because if you're somebody who, you know, you like to have a lot of support and you'd like to speak to partners every day about something and ask a lot of questions and you're quite inquisitive, then like a certain, you know, Pins of Asians, for example, they have an incredible training program. That's, that's my vibe. That's exactly what I'm about. I ask a lot of questions. Um, so that's perfect for me. But other firms, for example, like US law firms, they're much more like learning on the job type. Um, places where you just uh, throw it into the deep end and you just have to kind of work it out yourself so it totally depends on what suits you there's no right or wrong answer for that one um but just be mindful that different firms train you in different ways and again a good way to find that out is to speak to people who actually work at the firm um so how do you research law firms well this is a five-step process that i kind of finalized over the past couple of years through my own research and trial and error so what I would do is I'd write down on a piece of paper, what do I want out of my training contract? So what is your end goal? Where do you want to be in five years? And really think about why you're doing it in the first place. I think a lot of people, especially if they've just done a law degree, they just think that's all you can do with a law degree. But there's so many different things you can do with a law degree. So don't feel like you just have to go into law. Um, definitely explore all your options and really consider why you're doing law. And I remember when I got rejected from my vacation scheme, um, a couple of years ago that's what I really went back to I was like why am I doing this why and then I, I put it in a, a word document and then I had that at the top of all my research so it really motivated me to be like yeah this is why I'm doing it um so that's a quick tip there step two think about the factors that I just talked about on those previous slides so if you could create your perfect training contracts what would it look like? So do you want a lot of support? Do you want a more independent? What location would it be at? For example, what would the people be like, the culture, um, pro bono work? Like you, you, there's so many different factors to think about, but I think the ones that I spoke about just then are probably the most important. You don't want to get too bogged down in it because if you just spend, you know, a million hours researching, you'll end up like not, <laughs> you'd miss the deadlines for the application, which would not be good. Um, so just focus on a few key areas that are the most important for you. Step three, use Chambers, Legal Cheek, other reliable sources to do a bit of that background research. So looking at basic things like how many offices do they have? Are they international law firm, multinational, national, local level law firm? Like just have a little look at things like that and get a, a good grip on the facts of the um, firms. Then from doing this, make a list of five to eight firms that you think suit those factors now this is quite a controversial thing like everybody says a different thing um based on their own experience so some people could be like apply to 20 apply to 30 like do as many as you can um from my experience that doesn't work <laughs> um first hand I've, I've experienced that and it's not not a good way to go because you just you're spreading yourself too thin you haven't researched the firms properly you haven't really had the time to do the factors that i just spoke about on the previous slide you know you haven't spoken to everybody at the firm um so you know you don't want to be in a situation where you're spending loads of time doing stuff but you're doing the wrong thing it's about the expression like when people say like working smart not hard um that really applies here with researching law firms you don't want to be just looking at a million different law firms and trying to just guess which ones are right for you like I think it's important to establish what you want out of the contract first and then it makes it much easier to match up what you want with the firms that are out there 
um, from my experience anyway. And then step five, research the firms more in depth using the firm's website. So I like to look at their most recent deal sections on the websites. I use it in my applications. I mean, I'll talk about it a bit more next week in the application webinar, but um, you, using that um, law firm website to actually get um, a lot of key information like recent deals that they've done, what pro bono work do they do, what's, what are the core values, like basic things like that that can help you paint a picture of what the law firm is actually like. So are there any questions on that topic specifically? If anybody would like to put up their hand, let me know. Or just drop a question in the in the chat box and I'll answer it as, as we go along. Okay. LinkedIn. So this is the most important tool for any aspiring solicitor, as I touched on earlier. Network, network, network. It's so, so important. And I know that it's a bit of a sticky area for people because it's it can seem quite daunting. Like when you first start LinkedIn, I remember when I first downloaded it, my friend was like, oh, I'll get LinkedIn, it'll be really useful. And I was like, okay, cool. Downloaded it. And then you're like, it's not like Facebook where you just add all your friends. You're just like, I have no idea where to start with this. Um, so I can fully relate to that. Um, but it's important that you make genuine connections on LinkedIn. So genuine means that I've reached out to them, I've spoken to them, I've said hello, I've introduced myself, I had a conversation with them on LinkedIn Messenger. Um, there's not much point just sending random connection requests because, you know, people aren't going to remember like you if you're not making yourself heard and <laughs> making yourself, you know, present. And if you do that and have those genuine connections, then you can lean on your network. And I'll talk a little, about, a little bit about this in the next webinar, but basically I was interviewing, I interviewed somebody who's a CEO of a um, networking events company in London and for a platform that I used to do. And she just happened to know the global head of FinTech at CMS. Um, and she connected me to him. And then we, um, we spoke over Zoom and then I actually went down to London and did some work experience in CMS because of that. So that's perfect example of utilizing your network, really making those genuine connections because you just have no idea, like, you know, who knows who <laughs> um, and, you know, when you might need them. Um, so that's a perfect example of that. And it goes both ways. So if you put an effort to the networking, you'll generate a lot of knowledge over time and they'll, you know, give it you back it does take time to build up a large network I think it was something that I found really frustrating at the time because I was like you know you just want to have a big network immediately because you're like I don't have time like I need to apply for everything but you want to it's better to have a hundred genuine connections of people that are going to be really useful to you and you're going to be useful to them rather than you know just adding a million people and having like you know 10,000 connections but no one really knows who you are and then showing your value. I mean, you don't have to be like a content creator or anything if, if that doesn't float your boat, but showing your value in different ways, just updating your connections on what's going on in your life. Just like, look, I went to an event last night. That's what I used to do. Like I used to just <laughs> boast on LinkedIn all the time about what I was doing. Um, and while it may seem a bit like cheesy now, I look back on it, I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I, why did I do that all the time? Um, you know, it does get your name out there because your connections will keep seeing you popping up and it gets your name out there, like I say. Um, so how can you use LinkedIn to elevate your applications? So you can ask future trainees, trainees um, some questions about the firm. So like, for example, reaching out to me, you can ask me about, you know, how I found the process, for example, and for any firm that you're interested in. You can use it to build your personal brand. Like I say, you're making posts about what you're up to, what law events you're attending. Because you might think that, oh, no one's seeing this. Like if I've got like five connections, no one's going to know. Um, but the LinkedIn algorithm is a, is a crazy one. <laughs> you know, you can like a post and it can appear on like a thousand people's feeds. So um, it's still keep doing it and keep being consistent. And that's how you grow your following. Um, and again, it shows drive, determination and commitment to a legal career because you know, you just don't know if a legal recruiter at the firm um, that you're interested in is one of the people that ends up seeing that because someone liked it. Um, you just don't know. So step one on reaching out to senior legal professionals. This is something that I get a lot of questions about because it is very daunting if you've never spoken to like a partner before and you're like, ah, oh, like I don't know where to start. 
So you want to make sure that you've researched the firm um, quite well. You've got a good understanding of just like the basics, like it's an international law firm, it's a national law firm, just basic things like that. Um, make sure that you don't really ask questions that are vague. And while like people are very patient, all the partners I've met are, are super lovely and very patient. I think if you want to make sure that you stand out when you have a conversation, you want to talk about something a little bit different. So talk about like personal questions to them. So questions that you um, that you can't find online. So for example, I always ask, well, I always used to ask interviewers like, why did you go into law? What's your favorite part of working at X firm? Like things that are more personal um, from my experience work quite well. And things just about, um, like I say there, for example, like people could say, tell me more about your firm. And you're kind of sitting there like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, it could mean a million different things, but instead being more specific. So saying, for example, what DNI initiatives are there at your firm? Um, so it makes it really clear for the partner to then um, answer your question. So these, if you want to take a, a picture of this, um, please feel free. But all of these slides will be up on our gen after the event. Um, so I created a little table of different questions to ask at different levels. So obviously, like you can ask people anything you want. Um, but these are just a couple of examples that I thought would be quite useful. So the partner is a little bit more in depth about like, you know, what advice would you give to your younger self in my position? That's something that I always like to ask just because I am genuinely curious because I think, you know, it's always um, good to admit that you know, you are at the start of your legal career, like in the grand scheme of things, you don't know that much about the law. So learning from people who've been in it for like 20, 30 years is super, super valuable and what, what mistakes they made that they can then pass on to, to you that you then don't make um, is a brilliant thing. Um, associate level. I like to talk about um, what seats they decided to pick. Why did you decide to qualify in the area that you did? The training, what's that like? Um, and then a trainee or a future trainee, more like application questions, interview questions, commercial awareness questions, because they've just been through the process. Um, obviously, as I say, like you can ask people anything you want, but those are kind of the questions that I would go for um, there. And then step two, ask for a coffee or a virtual coffee. Now, this is something that I did quite a lot and I found it so useful and it really helped to boost my confidence because coming from chemistry, like I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> you know, I, I, I did I just had no idea. I had no friends that were studying law at uni either. So I really was just, you know, trial and error figuring out as I go. So I found that actually just speaking to people face to face, whether that be in real life or on Zoom, um, depending on your circumstances, you know, I found that to be super, super beneficial in terms of me actually getting a, a good understanding of what was required at that particular firm, what the vibe was at that firm. Um, and I think it's always good to not just go for one person, like a law firm, like if you're really interested in one firm, like Vincent Mason's, for example, speak to like five people from the firm, and then you can really get like a good idea of like what the firm culture is like what kind of people they hire the personalities like that kind of thing if I just exit for a second and show you guys my LinkedIn just to talk you through how to do a good LinkedIn profile so this is my LinkedIn and what you want to do here in the head of it is just make sure that it's really clear when I see people's LinkedIn's that just have like 10 million words on it and it's just so chaotic they've of everybody's done so many great things but like they just put it all in the header like it, it just doesn't look as good I feel like when it's really streamlined and really clear like this and clean it's just so much more attractive to a recruiter if they're looking at it because it can easily see right she's a future trainee at Pinson Masons and she's a mentor that's what she's focusing on right now rather than me editing it and putting in mentor chemistry graduate GDL graduate like just keep adding all the things like people can scroll down and look at that you want it to pack a punch and you know make an impact so put the things that are most important to you and your career at the top in the header don't overcrowd it now if we go down here to the about section this is something that is quite a weird one and is totally up to you and and personal preference some people have about sections that are just you know in third person or first person they have 
like a million different emojis or no emojis there's no sentences it's just bullet points like the your your about section is you know yours but for me I recently changed mine actually because mine was more kind of just a massive paragraph <laughs> um so now I've kind of gone for a little bit more split up into who am I it's just a quick one-stop shop like this is who I am what I do my unique skill set something that makes me stand out um academics what have I done academically and then what am I passionate about in my spare time now obviously that's just what I've done and you don't have to do the exact same thing um but just to show you that having an about section it doesn't need to be super boring or have no emojis or anything like that it's it's yours um to make really experience this is always really good um to make sure that it's quite full you want to make sure that you've added everything that you possibly can but don't make it too much so to treat it like your online cv that is what your linkedin profile should be it should be the most up-to-date reflection of your career to date um and you should update it as much as you would update your cv um that's a great tip from jake sugar that i learned um so make sure that you add in all of your different experiences write a little bit about it but you don't have to write paragraphs and paragraphs just something to tell whoever's reading your profile exactly what you've done remember to fill in your education bits licenses and certifications it doesn't matter if you don't have any but if you've been doing online courses like i do a lot of online courses in marketing for example um add them on there put some volunteering um, down as well that's always a really good one for law applications and then also skills skills is a really good one so you can get people to endorse you so you can get your friends or people that have worked in um, groups with you so for example if you haven't had a job yet and no one can endorse you for something don't worry um, if you've you if you've had a um, uni group project for example ask your group project members to endorse you for teamwork um, communication, leadership, things like that, just core skills but that a law firm would be looking at for an aspiring solicitor, basically. Um, and then you can give out recommendations um, or you can um, receive them. It just depends on what, what you're after there. So if I go back to my presentation, here is a message example. Again, you can take a picture of this, um, but all the slides will be up on our gen after the event. So this is just a template that I always use. I just int I say hi and put the person's name, what my name is, introduce myself, give them a quick rundown of who I am, what I'm doing, like I'm a chemistry grad, I've done this. Um, and then also give an actionable point. So say, like I've got an interest in this particular thing or I've noticed that you've written an article on this please could I have a chat with you about it just something that gets people to accept the request and then respond I think if you just say like hi my name is you know Lauren and I'm a chemistry grad full stop and just leave it at that you're probably not going to have as much of a um high rate of responses whereas if you actually give an actionable actionable um point on there you know, you'll definitely get a quicker response. Does anybody have any questions on the networking side of things? No, okay. So let's have a look at the legal CV. So we're jumping out again. Sorry if you're only jumping. <laughs> So I created a legal CV template. So I'm just going to run through this with you guys. So this is just a basic template, something that is a, basically a carbon copy of my um, CV. So at the top, you want to be putting a profile. Now, some people don't bother with this, um, but I think it's really important to have a three to four brief bullet point sentences of the best areas of your CV. You know, when you know, hiring managers and recruiters are going through so many different CVs. The first thing they, they are going to see when they look at your CV is that top bit. So making sure that packs a punch and is, you know, something that is like, wow, this person knows what they're doing. That's what you want. Um, so you want to have three to four brief bullet points. Key emphasis on brief there. You don't want to be doing too much. It should be about this length, to be honest. 
um, the length of this little bit here because um, you don't want it to be too long because you're obviously going to be explaining a little bit further down about your work experience more in depth. Um, but just do three to four brief bullet points, best areas of your CV, a summary of your career highlights to date, and then also think about what you want to do in the future. So on my CV, for example, when I was applying, I would put aspiring for a career as a solicitor. Now, while it might be more obvious for those of you who've done a law degree that that's what you want to go into, it's still worth putting down. But it's really important if you're coming from a non-law background, because if I just left it as I've got a chemistry degree, all my experience is in science, like someone in a legal recruiter looking at that would be like, you know, I've got no idea. <laughs> um, a top tip, personalise your CV to the firm you're applying to by adding their core value words throughout the CV. So this was like, um, like gold dust. Um, <laughs> when someone told me this, I was like, this is such a good idea. And it really does work. So for example, Pinter Masons, they have three core values. And um, when I was applying, one of them was like approachable. And I would put that throughout my CV and my application, because sometimes when you, when you're doing an application, and they ask you to put in a CV, you just say, oh, I'll just submit it as it is. I can't be bothered. Look, I've just spent a million hours doing the application. But it can really make a difference if you put the effort into your CV as well. It doesn't have to be like, you know, write a different CV for every single firm you do, because that's just ridiculous. Like, you don't need to do that. Um, but just doing little tweaks like that, like changing it to the firm core values of swapping out words and making it fit a bit more. It's just showing the firm that you really do align with those core values in a really like clear way. Because when the recruiter's reading that, they'll be like, oh yeah, approachable, like bold, like, you know, they'll, they'll see those words and automatically think, yeah, like they're right, a right fit for us. Um, so that's really important. Your education, I, some people put it further down, but I prefer to put it um, near the top. Just go through all the ones that you've done, post-grad, undergrad, A-levels, GCSEs, um, then go on to your legal work experience. So if you haven't done any legal work experience, do not worry at all. I had zero work experience. All I'd ever done was work in Primark and do some volunteering when I got my vacation scheme with Pinsons. So it can be done. <laughs> I am living proof that it can be done. Uh, you don't need to have fancy work experience. It's all about knowing these little tips and tricks. For example, like I said, just adding in the core values, doing little things like that that really make you stand out above other people. It doesn't matter whether you've done loads of experience or not they're looking for a right fit for them for the firm um so yeah a little run over <laughs> um legal work experience this section is for your legal only work experience if you've done a vacation scheme if you've been a paralegal if you've um if you've done those um i've forgotten the name of them now but there's those virtual internships that you can do online for free they're fantastic um, a campus ambassador roles. I know quite a few people do that. That's really great. Pro bono clinics, all of that good stuff. Put that in the legal work experience and put your most recent one at the top. Um, so yeah, like I say, I separate my legal experience from my employment history just because it makes it easier then for the firm to see that at the top of your CV that you've done some legal work experience. As I say, it's not be all and end all if you haven't got an A, but it is great if you can try and get at least something in that section, whether it's the, the free internships that you can do online or if you can get a paralegal role for a few months, anything is, is better than just leaving it blank. Um, so yeah, this is how I do it. Just put the company there, the role, and then put a little hyphen there and put date started, date ended. Um, two to three bullet points on the task that you completed. So basically what you did and what core skills that you learned. So using the transferable skills words from my latest post on more and more, but I'm going to go through that with you in a second anyway. Um, and then repeat for any more legal work experiences that you have. Then you want to go into your employment history. So for example, I would put Primark in this box and um, talk about that. So it's any paid roles that you've had, like working in retail, working in hospitality, things like that. And then the non-legal work experience. This is like... Um, just odd odd extracurriculars that don't really fit into employment or legal work experience so for example like I wrote articles in the business update I'm sure you guys have probably heard of that or the legal technologist magazine like I've written articles for quite a few publications so I would put that kind of thing in here so it's not volunteering but it's it's still work experience but you're not being paid for it so it's non-legal work experience um 
and that's the best way I think of, of putting it and then you want to put in your volunteering um I think volunteering is a really good string to your bow if you can have that I know a lot of people kind of just go straight to the legal work experience but volunteering has a lot of transferable skills and I'll talk about this in a second with my transferable skills post but um it all comes down to the transferable skills you know you could do 10 years worth of legal work experience but if you phrase it in the wrong way on the application you don't talk about the skills that you gained from it you just say yeah I did this I did that I did that but you're not really focusing on what the firm is looking for they would pick somebody like me who's had no experience because I phrased it better on the application um, and I'm living proof of that so I'll go through it in a second and then finally hobbies and interests so it can be useful for the firm to know a little bit more about you as a person what interests you you know what floats your boat I'm really interested in music business fashion um, things like that so I would definitely still put that on your CV while it's not law related it's still nice for recruiters to have a look and see what you're genuinely interested in outside of all your academic studies like I say it's optional you don't have to if you don't have the space it doesn't need to be lengthy, but just a couple of bullet points. That's what's on my CV. And then finally, ad references are available upon request at the bottom. And then that should be your CV. So it should be around two, two, two and a half pages um, and just leave it at that. So if we go back to this. Now we're going to talk about stage one of the process. So applications. I'm mainly going to focus on application answers next week like I say with the good versus bad stuff that I do um but just a little roundup here you're trying to sell yourself in this application which is something that sounds really just daft when you first think about it but it is like a sales pitch for you there are thousands of other students that are applying for the same job um and you've got to just think what are the unique qualities what are the unique attributes that I have that make me shine make me stand out above everybody else and yeah if you can't sell yourself how can you sell a service um this is something that one of my mentors told me and it really resonated with me a few years ago and that's what they're testing they're testing to see who's who's a good salesperson um basically because when you're a lawyer you're having to win clients over and if you can't sell yourself how can you then sell the service that you're trying to provide um because that's what i always used to think when i was doing my applications so the work experience section is normally the top bit of the application. So before we get into the questions, because the questions will be um, next week's session, but the work experience section. When I was first applying, as I say, I was really concerned about my lack of experience. I had nothing at all. I just had Primark on my CV, a little bit of volunteering, and I was like, yikes, what am I going to do? Um, and I was really concerned about that lack of experience as I had no work experience in the legal sector. And like I say, while having it is great, it's not a deciding factor as to whether you'll get your vacation scheme. It's all about the transferable skills. So if I break that down for you guys now, these are some examples from my CV. So the type of experience, working at a high street retailer, I did that with Primark, um, the transferable skills you've got great communication teamwork time management just these like really basic things that you can tweak on your cv you can just make all the difference because if we look here that's basically all the skills that they'd be looking for as a trainee solicitor just in these three and none of them have anything to do with legal work experience so it's all about the way that you phrase it so don't worry if you don't have much legal work experience you can phrase the things that you do have in a way that makes it attractive to a legal employer so starting your own platform or your own project outside your studies i know quite a few of you guys have your own insta pages or you share things which is amazing so you can talk about leadership skills from running a platform organization skills you know it's hard to run a platform while also studying and doing other bits and then volunteering at a charity this is something that i did a lot of when i was younger so for example when i was at school, I was an Oxfam Youth Ambassador in 2014 and 2015. Um, and we, we did a lot of like um, cake sales and, and stands and stuff in, in school. And there was negotiating involved in terms of the prices of the products that were going to be sold from a certain retailer, public speaking at universities about what the charity's done. Um, just little things like that. <laughs> changing the, um, <coughs> bless you. <laughs> 
um, changing um, the words and the, the transferable skills. That's what you want to do. You want to break it down to that. And then law related work experience. As I say, if you don't have it, don't worry. But if you can get some of these, this is going to make a big difference to your application. So paralegal or legal assistant role. I've just finished my legal assistant role, as I just mentioned earlier. You gain a lot of value um, from doing these, um, which is ov obvious. You know, if, if you've never worked in a law firm before, it's very different to learning it in books. Um, I can tell you that firsthand. It's very, very different. So you're drafting legal documents, you're talking to clients, you're proofreading um, things, and you gain a lot of confidence by speaking to clients and also observing um, what other lawyers do. So it sounds really silly, but like even just observing how they speak to clients or how they send emails or how they phrase certain things, like you definitely do pick it up over time. And that's what I think was my biggest takeaway over the past year of working as a legal assistant. Shadowing, this is really great. I never managed to do this, um, but it is a brilliant way of doing it. Some of my friends have managed to do that before where you observe what the partner's doing or the trainee's doing. You really pick a lot up that way. Vacation scheme, that's another really great way. I did a vacation scheme. It was virtual because it was in COVID time. So it was a little bit different to what some of you might have experienced if you've had an in-person vacation scheme. But you get to really see what the law firm is like because you're actually there. You're like speaking to their employees like all day every day for a couple of weeks in networking with the employees like I say and you're working on real life cases and getting to have meetings with people um so they're the main law related work experiences they're the three that like you really want to try and um, aim for but like I say it's not essential because there are other types of law related work experience that you can do it's a forage that that's the word <laughs> forage internship so Pinsons have one on there that was my first introduction to the firm really um I did it before I did my real vacation scheme with them Clifford Chance do really great ones as well Bird and Bird do a really good one um and anyone can access these they're free on the forage website um it used to be called Inside Sherpa so if any of you um knew that that's now Farage um they just changed their name last year um first year schemes obviously being a chem student I had no idea about this <laughs> I didn't even know these were a thing um uh, but there are a lot of first year schemes out there especially the firms in London like ANO Clifford Chance for example they do a lot of um, things like that pro bono clinics I'm sure a lot of you are involved in those already at university but if you haven't they're a brilliant way of getting some hands-on legal experience and good opportunity there mooting another one via uni that you can do which is really great and then also campus ambassador roles so you find those at university fairs checking off on websites seeing what openings become available um and they're a great way to just get your name out there within the firm um and have your name associated with the firm that you're after as well a quick definition of commercial awareness so what is it I remember when I first started I had no idea what commercial awareness was I was completely baffled by it I just couldn't understand like I was coming from chemistry like it's totally non-business related um so suddenly having to understand how things work was just really difficult but basically firms are just testing to see how well you understand the business side of the firm so it is really important to remember that a lawyer is a business advisor and I remember someone said this really early on in my um journey and I just thought, wow, like I didn't even think of a lawyer like that. But it, that is definitely the case. Um, having seen it firsthand now working in a law firm, you're really giving advice on the business and you kind of become like a, a business partner um, because you're, you're offering all this advice and you're having an input in how the company um, is operating. So you're looking at how current affairs will change not only their business, but also the client's business as time goes on. So it's having an awareness of how things will change. Obviously, within the firm, there are loads of different factors. I'll go over them um, in the next webinar. Um, but things like Brexit, COVID, um, you know, um, competition from the big four like Deloitte, um, they have their own um, in-house legal teams now, which are direct competitors for a lot of the big law firms. There are loads of other different factors, um, but you need to be thinking about what will affect the clients' businesses as well, which is where the more general commercial awareness comes into it. So knowing a little bit about the energy sector, for example, 
knowing a bit about hospitality sector if they've got a big food and drink um sector in the firm just having a look at what is what are their big areas in the firm and trying to and trying to fit the commercial awareness to that i'll speak a bit more about commercial awareness in, in the next one too but that was just a quick intro into it because we're going to have a look at generic law firm questions next so when i say generic law firm questions just basic ones like why law why this firm things like that um and we're not going to make them generic we're going to make them specific because if you try and if you answer a generic law firm in a generic way your application is going to get binned instantly you want to make sure that it's really specific so step one we're going to go onto the firm's website see what kind of language they use look at those core values and try and find the language so step two we're looking at how do we align with that so like i say pincer masons have a core value of approachable i've aligned what i've done particularly in the volunteering section um sector of my um experience as being approachable i would add that word in there just to solidify the fact that i do align with the firm step three we're going to find a deal so we're finding something that they recently worked on so for example i looked at a pharmaceutical deal because of my chemistry background and i would say that i um because of my chemistry background i would be really suited um, to this kind of deal and i could add a lot of value to the team given my expert knowledge in the chemistry area it just depends on what background you have there but definitely you can use that um to bulk up your own strengths step four you want to talk to people at the firm um, either at events, so the Legal Cheek Law Fairs, they're absolutely brilliant. I know they had one recently and I think they've got more coming up over the coming months. Definitely, definitely go to them because they are absolutely fantastic in terms of meeting the firm, meeting the recruiters, getting your name out there, asking good questions and learning a bit more about the firm. That's a really good one to go to. But also LinkedIn, if you can't make those dates, just go on LinkedIn and find trainees and future trainees like we spoke about earlier on in the session. And yeah, every piece of experience you have is all about relating your work experience back to, um, you know, the core values of the firm and breaking it down to the fundamental transferable skills. So does anybody have any questions around application questions? Because next week I'm going to be doing a bit of a good versus bad um, a situation on application questions. So if you have any that you'd specifically like me to have a look at through the session, drop them in the chat box now I'll make a note of them at the end of the session and I will write those slides up this week um, and now we've got a Q&A on literally anything at all I've seen there are a few um, things in the chat box let me stop sharing for a second okay right so how to generate a genuine network after adding lots of people the key is to, to create the genuine network is before you add anybody. So you want to be having the message with the ad, if that makes sense. So you don't want to just like go through a list of people of recommendations and just be like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and just don't send them a message. Like the key there is to really create a personalized message from the get go. And then they'll accept the request and be like, oh, wow, they've noticed this about me. So like I say, I would say to somebody, if they've written a lot of articles on like robotics or AI or something that I was interested in, I'd be like, I've seen you've written a lot of articles on this. I just wanted to question um, you on the point of X, Y, Z. Just give the person that you're sending the request to an actionable point because then they'll be more likely to respond to you. Um, hi, would you mention all your GCSE grades? No, you don't need to do that. So on the template that I just showed, all we need to do is put in a maths and English grade. You can put in like however many it is. So like you could put in like a, like a star to B and then A maths, B English or whatever it is. A lot of the firms, all they're after really is the maths and, and English grade. You can list them out if you want, but it depends on how much space you have. And I think you can definitely use that space um, to do talk about other things like your work experience. Um, I'm so confused about profiles. Half of recruiters I reached out to advised not to add them or half a more pro personal profile. Yeah, it is a bit of a weird one, this, because some recruiters are not the biggest fan of, you know, adding people. Like one of my friends is a recruiter and she said that 
if you add them and send you know ask them loads of questions like it, it can be really annoying but obviously it depends on, on the recruiter that you're you're talking to um for me personally if i've had a conversation with the recruiter or i've met them at a networking event for example when i met the recruiter at vincent mason's at a networking event about three years ago i added her and just said thank you so much um for a, a great evening evening kind regards lauren you don't have to necessarily ask them a question because you've already spoken to them beforehand so the key there is to speak to them first um i think so go to the legal cheek law fair ask a question and then afterwards send them a connection request and just say thank you so much um for your time today kind regards and then your name um would you put pro bono under volunteering or legal work experience hmm, that's a good question actually i think i think i would put it in legal work experience um just because it is legal related i think anything legal related i would whack it in legal work experience to try and bulk it up as much as possible um because i'm well aware that at this stage like most of us don't have like 10 years worth of <laughs> of legal work experience so anything that's remotely legal related try and put it in that legal work experience bit um and bulk that it, put that bit in um could you expand on the phrasing yeah so if i have a lot of people tell me to change phrasing and it's about how you tell or sell your experience and it's so confusing yeah i can fully relate to that <laughs> it's a bit of a chaotic one um expanding on phrasing so for me i think like I say, it all comes down to the transferable skills. So if you just keep that in the front of your mind when you're writing your application, that really does help. It is a bit of a minefield out there and you can think, you know, some recruiters say they want this, some recruiters say they want that. Everybody's got a different opinion on it. But the one thing that everybody is in agreement on is making sure those transferable skills match the job description. So as long as you've got those skills in there, like organisation, leadership, negotiation, um, teamwork, things like that that is what they're looking for in the job description of a trainee solicitor so just try and think of it as obviously like applying for these um law firm jobs they're not like normal job applications as we all know um, unfortunately they are very tricky and very difficult and a lot of work goes into them it's not just sending a cv off and just you know getting the job like that like it, it takes a lot of work um so just bring it back to the basics and think if you were applying for any other job, you'd look at the job description. What what are they after? What do they want? And try and match what you've done um, to the um, with the transferable skills that you've done to whatever they're after, basically. Um, talking about CVs, what are your thoughts on cover letters? Are they necessary? Um, it depends on the firm you're applying to. Sometimes they say, yeah, we want a cover letter but other times they're not that bothered i think if it's optional do it um because you don't want to be the person that doesn't um send in a cover letter when you know everybody else has but if they don't even mention it and they just say can we have your cv and then upload here i wouldn't put one in so for example i think it was pinson's actually they wanted a cv um on theirs i just uploaded the cv i didn't have a cover letter for that at all um whereas another firm they said oh it's optional um to have the cover letter and i still did it anyway just because like i say you, you don't want to be the one person that doesn't do it when everyone else has um and you're already at a disadvantage before you even start so you want to make sure that you you give yourself the best opportunity there um how to answer questions like why law or why commercial law in your applications that's going to be in next week's presentation so next week i'm going to go over the all, all the different ones basically all all the classics why law why me <laughs> um what's a good news article like all those kind of questions i'm going to do them in my good versus bad style so if you follow me on instagram which i'm sure a lot of you do because you've probably got this link from there i go through i have a little series um that i started quite recently where i go through the good applications so the ones that were successful for me and then the bad ones so the ones from earlier on in my journey where they were horrendous and <laughs> analyzing them on what makes them good and what makes them bad so i'll be going over them then um so hi lauren i'm applying in sixth form um for a solicitor apprenticeship program in september I'm struggling to apply to work experience schemes due to spending so much time on one question do you have any advice for me um 
I think it's definitely difficult when you have a lot of things to be juggling um, at once. Like I often, fa- that's why I say like it's good uh, earlier on when I talked about research in law firms, that's why it's really good to condense your search down to about five different firms because you don't want to be spreading yourself too thin. Um, I think little and often um, is the best thing for law, law firm applications. You don't want to be leaving it all to the last minute. Like some people, to be honest, some people I know it has worked for them where they've done it the night before and fair enough. Um, but for me, I, I just want to make sure that I'm doing the best that I possibly can. And um, the best way to do that is to just do a little bit every day. So don't overwhelm yourself. Um, it's totally fine if you spend a lot of time um, doing, doing a question just maybe pick like two or three different schemes um, that you want to go for and really put a lot of effort into that. And it's totally fine. Just make sure that you start writing it well in advance rather than just um, leaving it last minute. How do we access the CV template you did? So there are two different ways. One of them is it's via our gen, um, which I'll, I'll drop a link for in, in a second, or it's in my Instagram bio. Um, so it's on there already. So if you go on to more and more right now, it's actually on there. So you can have a look there. Um, yeah, I'd love if you add a section about cover letters on next week's session. I will do. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you very much for saying thank you. Um, and the final bit of my little presentation, let me just share my screen again. Is I just wanted to talk a tiny bit about the next session dates. So I've been mentioning this is going to be in the next session. Blah blah blah. Um, session two is next Wednesday, so that's going to be about the applications. Like I say, good versus bad. I'm going to add that section about cover letters for you in there, um, as well over the next week. Session three is about the interview. So I'm going to talk about interview questions that I found really challenging and difficult, um, ones that are are easy but are often messed up and then I'm also going to talk about my own journey and I also have a very special guest for session three which is very exciting um so stay tuned for that and that announcement on more on law um but those are the dates I save the dates there and I'll put the links on my more on law page for you to sign up um and get the new zoom link and then finally so our gen is an organization that I've partnered with they're absolutely fantastic if you haven't got a free account with them already definitely do I'll add that um, the link to my stories after this um, if you guys want to sign up. It's a really brilliant organisation. I've worked with them for about a year now on a couple of different things, but this is our first main collaboration together. Um, and they do some really great free content for you to access. As I say, all the slides from this and the recording is going to be on their website straight after the event. Um, but in the meantime, um, before my next two sessions, if you want to have a look at these two insights, scan these two QR codes now. If you fancy having a little look at these articles about insights into law, I'll just leave those up for a second if anybody would like to have a look at them. And then the last thing for me to say is just best of luck um, with doing it. If you want to do your research this week, um, best of luck with that and feel free to get in touch with me if you need any more guidance or you have any more questions just drop me a dm and yeah i'll be on it as soon as possible but yeah wow i did it right on time i was really like worrying that i was going to go over for ages and i was going to ramble but yeah thank you very much everybody hope you have a nice evening oh thank you everybody for the kind words <laughs>